Good morning and welcome to the Inexo Group PLC Interim Results Investor Presentation. In fact, this recorded presentation, investors are being listen only mode. Questions are encouraged, can be submitted at any time via the Q&A tab situated in the right hand corner of your screen. Just click Q&A, type in your question and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question received during the meeting itself. However, the company review all questions submitted today and publish responses where appropriate to do so. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll. I'd now like to hand you over to Alan Sellers, Executive Chairman. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm here today with uh, Mark Brimlow, our CFO, new, newly appointed. Uh, thank you all for attending. Um, if we can go, please, to page two of the presentation, starting with the investment rationale. Before we go on to that, uh, for those of you that don't fully know the business, I'll set out what the business actually does. And typically, the core business, a client has a road traffic accident, which is not their fault. They very often go to their local independent retailer after the accident, looking for a repair to their vehicle or looking for assistance. If it's one of our garages or referrers, they will hopefully recommend the client to um, our hire company, um, which is either direct accident, the cars, um, the cams for motorcycles or cams for uh, cycles. If the client contacts us, our claims vetting team will speak to the client, look into all the circumstances of the case. And if we decide it's a non-fault accident, we'll take the case on and the client is provided subject to various standards, such as does he need a vehicle, et cetera, with a higher vehicle. The client's um, vehicle is often written off, so um, we will arrange um, for a higher vehicle during the period of the client waiting for his check from an insurance company, or we will arrange for a repair to be carried out to the client's vehicle and provide the client with an alternative like the light vehicle during that process. The client is then given the opportunity to contact Bond Turner, which is part of the Anexo group. And if the client instructs Bond Turner, we at Bond Turner will arrange to recover the repair charges or the write-off charges the higher charges and any other aspects that the client may wish to change their claim for. So it's a fully integrated approach with two distinct and separate companies, which we believe is more efficient than having two independent, unrelated hire companies and or solicitors. Where we're very different to other people in the marketplace, such as Ready, we tend to act for the impecunious client. What does impecunious mean? It basically means that the client doesn't have sufficient funds to repair his or her vehicle or um, afford an alternative hire car. The benefit of that is that um, we can charge much higher rates of higher charges following a Supreme Court decision. Also, there is, you know, particularly following the cost of living crisis, you know, huge increases in the number of impecunious clients, because impecunious, you know, is a question of fact in every case. It might be that somebody on paper is, you know, looks particularly wealthy, but if they're maxed out on their credit card, etc., they may be deemed impecunious. It's a growing area, and you'll see from our investment rationale, we specialise also in the gig economy, you know, couriers particularly in London and the major conurbations, which are you know, growing, as I'm sure you all have seen in your own knowledge, uh, rapidly. The integrated approach, as I said before, is more efficient. We have a very good claims vetting team and should the matter proceed ultimately to trial at court, we have a less than 2% failure rate. 
where litigation has commenced. The vast majority of cases, however, settled before any final court hearing. And then over the page, housing disrepair, you'll have seen the figures and Mark will go through with them with you shortly. The housing disrepair <clears throat> team essentially only started a couple of years ago, but what we were seeing from the impecunious client, that not only did they often need assistance following a road traffic accident, the impecunious client often lives in poor quality housing. Um, that's how that um, department developed. It's been very fast growing and is probably now the largest housing disrepair team in the country. And revenues are up by over 25%. We also set up two or three years ago, um, a group litigation team, starting initially with the Aston Hall child abuse inquiry, which was at the time the largest at that time. And that subsequently developed into emissions, more particularly diesel uh, emissions. We settled our first diesel emissions claim in May of this year, which was announced to the city. We have an ongoing claim against Mercedes, and we have just started marketing for BMW. There are approximately five to six other manufacturers that we intend to pursue over the course of the next couple of years. All the costs of acquisition and legal costs on all our emissions cases are expensed as incurred. Over the page, we've set out for you the uh, integrated hire and legal services model. To the left, credit hire. As I said before, we act for the impecunious non-fault accident victim. We deal in both cars and motorcycles. Our main source of work is from independent introducer garages, typically smaller garages, as in not main dealerships. We do both repairs and write-offs of vehicles, but at the moment, the vast majority of our fleet is in the motorcycle um, market. We do a large number of cases involving fast food delivery drivers and um, people that deliver documents. To the right, we've set out what <clears throat> Bonterna does, which is the recovery of costs and compensation from the at-fault motorist in the um, core business, credit hire. If we also claim associated personal injury and damaged items. Our HDR housing team, as I said before, deals with substandard housing, including damp and mold. We've started the, the, sorry, the Mercedes claim. We have over 12,000 ongoing claims and BMW um, campaign has just started. Over the page, there is huge growth potential, particularly in credit hire. Set out there some statistics, number of licensed vehicles at the end of 22, 33.2 million vehicles and 1.36 million motorcycles. Personal injury accidents, at the end of 22, 136,000. Although <clears throat> that figure is probably misleading because that only includes when the matter is reported to the police. So the figure is much greater. The MOJ in 18 anticipated there were approximately 700,000 road traffic accidents each year. The CMA in 14 suggested that there were 300 thousand credit hire opportunities and accidents each year and we have a very small market share somewhere in the region of two to three <clears> percent <throat> in terms of legal services 24 million homes in england and wales 4.4 are private rentals 4 million are socially rented 1.44 million it's estimated fail to meet the decent home standards and there are over 725,000 homes 
with damp and mould. Vehicle emissions, I'm sure you're all aware, this is a global issue with mitigation against most uh, manufacturers worldwide. We reached agreement with uh, Volkswagen in June of this year. We have 12,000 plus Mercedes cases and we're investigating at least six other manufacturers. So I'll hand over now to Mark for our financial highlights for the half year. Thank you very much, Alan, and good morning, everybody. We've just set out there some of the key financial highlights for first half 23 compared to first half 22. But just wanted to give you a little context around our kind of challenges in the business and our kind of targets and aspirations for this six month period. During 22, the business and, and 21 to some extent grew significantly from a core business credit hire perspective, invested as Alan's described in the emissions case, primarily VW and more recently Mercedes and, and BMW and set up and developed a housing disrepair team. So significant diversification across the group in the, the last kind of 18, 24 months. Where we've kind of found ourselves is that growth in credit hire with an extended working capital cycle means that we need to borrow funds to, to grow from that perspective. So 2023 for us has really been a position where we've been holding back on growth in credit hire. And as you'll see from the uh, the RNS note of our interims this morning, credit hire revenues dropped from just over 42 million to just under 29 million. And that's all through management intervention, cutting costs, making sure the business is operating efficiently, but more is holding back on that growth. Much of our cost and our, and our spend sits on balance sheets until we settle an individual case, which can be 18 months into the future. So by holding back on that growth, We've really been identifying and you know targeting the best possible opportunities for the group to drive our net debt numbers down and transfer a significant movement in free cash generation for the group and some of those statistics are on the slide six for you there notwithstanding a significant drop in revenue within credit hire revenue for the whole group increased from just on over 68 million in first half of 22 to over 77 million in the first half of 23 now that includes the fees associated with the VW claim, and we've given you um, data and analysis from our announcement in June around that individual settlement. Profitability for the group at an operating level increased from just over 16 million to over 19 million, an increase of nearly 20%. And PBT increased from 13.6 million in the first half of 22 to just over 15 million in the first half of 23, an increase of almost 12%. Cash collections, where we can really drive the business forwards in terms of reducing our borrowings or identifying and investing in new case portfolio without the need for additional debt, grew from 67.9 million in first half 22 to over 77 million in first half 23. And those numbers just continue to improve. With statistics on the following page, just talking around legal staff and the more legal staff we can get, both in the core business from a credit hire perspective and into housing disrepair and, you know, more recently into emissions means that we can continue to drive those, those numbers up. Those numbers there don't include the fees that we generate as a group from the, um, the VW claim. Net debt was clearly a key focus for us, rose quite significantly during 2022, dropped slightly during the second half of that period but has come down by almost 12 million between the end of December 22 and 30th of June 23, well ahead of our own internal targets. And that's really twofold. You know, those cash collection numbers continue to grow, careful cost control within the group and careful investment in case portfolios. Housing, as Alan described, has been a, a significant growth area for us. Working capital cycles tend to be in the order of around seven to nine months rather than a credit hire claim, which can be 18 to 24 months. And it's significantly less, less capital intensive. So a, a key focus for us to continue to drive that business into this cash generative position, something that we're looking to continue for the remainder of 2023 and into 2024. Just turning the page over to page seven. Again, we've got our, our cash collections number at the top up 14% period on period. And that's on the basis of the, you know, the good work that the Bon Turner teams are doing, settling cases, generating cash for the group so we can reinvest into new cases. 
Completed vehicle hires, you see there, down from just over 5,500 to just under 4,700, down 15% period on period. And that's us just turning work away. You know, our sales team of 19 are generating claims from our referrer network, as Alan described. We're cherry picking the best of those opportunities, but unfortunately not supporting as many people as we like. But, you know, with that working capital cycle, we need to be very careful to, uh, to manage within our working capital facilities. And as I say, a key target for us in this first half year and the remainder of 23 was to bring some of those debt numbers down. Driving those cash collections, as I say, was those legal staff. So legal staff grew from 633 at the end, uh, middle of 22 to 690 at the middle of 23, an increase of over 9%. And driving that growth in HDR there, you can see the number of cases that we have on book. So 2,200 at June 22, rising to nearly 3,300 at the end of 23, voting well for the remainder of the year in terms of settlements, which continue to grow up 59% period on period. And additional staff will continue that good process and trend that we're seeing through the business. Just some update there really on, on current trading. You know, we continue to manage the fleet carefully with those cash collection numbers continue to rise, the target really for the second half of 23 is remain steady from a net bet debt perspective. But as we generate additional cash, free cash for the group, we can invest in additional case numbers. So vehicle numbers have ri risen up to nearly 1,800 in the middle of August. And I suspect that they'll peak at over 2,000 in the early part of the, the winter as the, uh, you know, the light, uh, dark nights come through. The courier business has become more busy, particularly in the run up to Christmas. Motorcycles are still the majority of fleet, probably 85 to 90 percent of the fleet at the minute. We've really targeted that motorcycle side of the business because of the, um, the proximity to M25. We're working very closely with a number of large courier businesses in the, uh, the London area of conurbation to generate best value for the group. Motorcycle claims tend to be slightly longer in terms of length and slightly less capital intensive, which is why the business has pushed the motorcycle side of the business over the four wheel car type business, which is a, you know, a much larger opportunity. Housing, as I've just described, has grown settlements and case numbers significantly period on period, and that will continue. Continuing to recruit high level staff into that team so we can continue to develop and grow and settle more cases and reinvest those funds. As Alan described, Mercedes has been a key investment area for us during 22 and early into 23. Case numbers now at around 12,000 and looking for settlement in the future for that particular claim. Cash generation and reduction of net debt, as I described, is a real key target for us, having reduced that number by over 11 million, 11.9 million in the first six months of this year, something that we aim to, to continue into 23 and 24. As in 23, sorry, 22, the consideration of what we want to do from a dividend is going to be deferred to the end of the financial year. See where our net debt numbers are rather than doing an interim and then a final. We're just going to look towards a, a final dividend should the, uh, the financial capacity of the business be sufficient. On the following three pages there, we've got the, the income statement, the balance sheet and the cash flow. And really the key, the key element for me there is that net cash from operating activities. You know, we turned a profit of 10.9 million in first half 22 into a cash outflow of 5.1 million during that year. That's sorry, that six month period. First six months of 23, similar number from a profit perspective, but turned that 10 million into a 15.7 million cash inflow. So a significant transformation, 20.8 million difference between first half 22 and first half 23, really supporting that reduction in net debt that we've been describing to you. And I think that brings us to the end of the presentation. So more than happy to take take questions as we have. That's fantastic, Callum Mark. Thanks indeed for the presentation. Um, ladies and gentlemen, do please continue submitting your questions just using that Q&A tab situated on the right hand corner of the screen. But just while the team take a few moments to review those questions submitted today, I'd like to remind you the recording of the presentation along with the copy of the slides and published Q&A can be accessed via your investor dashboard. I'd now like to hand you over to Nick Dashwood-Brown, Head of Investor Relations, to host the Q&A. Um, Nick, as you can see, we've received a number of questions from investors and thank you for submitting those. Um, can I just please ask you just to read out the question where appropriate to do so and direct it to the team? Absolutely, thank you. Morning, everybody. Um, first question, um, 
which is uh, your completed vehicle hires down 14.8 percent year on year number of hire cases is is high cases funded is down 3.2 percent and at the same time the number of hdr cases is up 48.4 percent it appears you're switching capital to the higher margin segments is this deliberate or has this shift occurred for other reasons it, it's absolutely deliberate, as we described, the working capital cycle and the amount of capital needed to deploy into a credit hire case is significantly higher than that for housing. So, yeah, it's been an absolute deliberate shift to diversify out of credit hire and really grow the, the HDR side of the business. As Alan described, revenue up 25 percent period on period, and we continue to see that growth coming through as we invest in, in more and more cases and more and more people from that side of the business. Um, next question, which is just a clarification question, really. The, um, the 7.2 million agreement uh, for emissions, did that include or exclude accrued expenses? Net suggests it excluded and those were on top. Um, I'm not sure what accrued expenses mean. All of our costs were written off as incurred. Yep. So the, um, the 7.2 is, is as we described in the in the note, the net cash generated from that particular settlement. And as I think lots of people are aware, we're we're bound by certain confidentiality rules around the uh, the VW settlement. Yeah, net net. Um, just a question, which I can probably answer on: uh, Are there any new analyst notes coming out? Just to be aware um, that uh, WH Ireland, who are our nomad and joint broker, have put out a, a note this morning. And we are expecting a note forthcoming from Zeus, who are our joint broker, at some stage in the very near future. Um, another question. Please, could you compare the working capital profile of emission and housing claims versus credit hire? Crikey. Um, yeah. uh, I can, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> credit hire, nearly all our costs are incurred in the first 60 days. So the period that we're, um, we're putting the vehicle on the road, delivering it to the client, vetting the claim, you know, all of the costs associated with the individual vehicle are incurred up front and written off as incurred. That's also very similar from a, from a legal services perspective. You know, the vetting of the claim happens immediately. We will pro be providing immediately, we have it, information to the at-fault party to try and seek settlement. Um, there is a that working capital cycle is really driven by the court process rather than what we're looking to try to achieve. We're trying to get settlement as early as possible. Clearly, insurers are trying to keep their cash in their pockets as long as possible. And there's a there's a balance to be found in that. So we've done, and I know Nick has, very indifferent um, examples of a working capital of a cycle of a car and a bike claim. And if uh, whomever asked the question would like the detail, we can we can provide that to you. Alongside that, housing is, is very different. Um, the vetting of the claim is very simple. We're, we're typically acquiring cases that are pre-vetted with surveyor's reports, and it's pretty obvious that the house is um, in, a, in a very difficult state of disrepair and, and almost uninhabitable. So um, at the minute, we're only taking claims and cases from a social landlord perspective, whether it be housing association or local authority, who tend to be quite good at settling, but at the minute not very good at repairing the individual's property. So we've got an individual team now set up in Bon Turner to make sure that that happens. Fees for us tend to come in at around nine, seven, seven to nine months, something like that. So significantly quicker than a credit hire perspective. Um, fees are averaging around four and a half thousand pounds per per HDR case. And our costs are typically around 50% of that, whether it be the uh, the marketing fee to generate the claim or the legal staff to um, to generate the settlement and, and get the property repaired by the client. Emissions are very different. You know, um, we were working on, uh, sorry, Volkswagen for probably three years from the start point. Um, and it very much depends on, um, the individual manufacturer, I would have thought, as to when and how that um, that settlement or is achieved. Um, it, everybody will be aware that there's far more people now recognising there's an opportunity from a legal perspective. So um, fees for generation of claims from social media are significantly higher now than they used to be. 
um, probably three or four times potentially because of that increased knowledge and that increased competition. But there's lots of people that think they can do, you know, do this type of business. It's not like PPI, you know, it's very difficult litigation. And we're finding a number of instances where we're having smaller lawyers who have acquired a number of cases come to us to help them, you know, want to join the group litigation order and us to help them through the process. So, yeah, the, the working capital cycle, again, is is highly um, IT driven. So staffing are much lower level, more kind of um, uh, guys taking telephone calls rather than anything else and chasing information. And then clearly there's a number of senior heads that, that run the department. But, yeah, it tends to be multiple years, invest money over multiple years and then get a significant settlement at that particular point in time. OK, thank you. Um, further on housing disrepair, there's a specific question. Have we thought about targeting student accommodation, some of which is well below par due to unscrupulous landlords? Or are these tenancies just too short relative to the time it takes to litigate? I think um, you've answered your own question there, Nick. Um, the answer is yes, they are too short. And um, the cases where we have acted for students, they tend, shall we say, to have other interests in their life. And, and not particularly cooperative in the proceedings. Fair enough. Thank you. Um, two questions, actually, uh, asking about earnings per share. Earnings per share is down, although the, num the other numbers higher up are, are up. Is there a way of reconciling that that um, that differential? Uh, I think if you look on the on the face of the P and L account, tax is a larger number than you would expect. Certain of our our costs associated with the the VW claim are not tax deductible. So you get a you get a change from the, the reported profit to the net profit, which obviously impacts your earnings per share number. OK. Um, to just uh, a, a, another one coming up, sorry. Could you give a bit more detail on the increase in payables and what the expectations are for a, for a more normal level going forward? Um, I haven't thought about what they are let me just have a quick look in the um in the rns nick do you want to ask another question that alan yeah, essentially i'll have a quick look um how easy are we finding difficulty in recruiting qualified staff because the the, the legal numbers keep going up are we running out of sorry <laughs> um are we running out of solicitors to recruit is the question. Uh, you're on mute. Yeah, I, I turned us on mute for the fire alarm, sure. Nick, so we're back Sorry. now. Okay. Sorry, Nick, what, what did you say, Nick? Sorry. <coughs> uh, are we having difficulty in recruiting qualified staff? We're still adding. Are we running out of good solicitors? Uh, no is the answer. But what we've done, uh, Nick, is in the last nine months, we've set up the NXO Academy to recruit um, people starting at the age of 16, 18, 21, but also more um, senior people who particularly may have been, let's say, a family lawyer that want to retrain into HDR, credit hire, etc. So, you know, we're running that alongside our weekly uh, recruitment campaigns. Okay. Just on the, on the payables piece, Nick, I think some of it is tax driven. So I suspect there'll be a, a slightly more normal level towards the, the end of the year. But as, as profitability improves and activities increase, you know, that our the level of taxes that we need to pay, whether it be VAT or CT, continue to continue to rise. OK, um, I'll combine two questions on debt. Um, what's our target for net debt for the for, for year end? At what level does debt reduction become less pressing? Uh, which is another way of saying, do we have specific targets in mind uh, or is the plan to keep debt unchanged at these levels and use the extra cash for higher margin divisions? I think certainly the feedback that we got when we did our investor presentations for full year was that the feeling from our investor pool was that the net debt number was too high for where, where we currently were. So clearly there's been a focus this year so far and will continue to be on the reduction of that. I think where we where we kind of got to was um, core business we wanted to hold back certainly in the first half with growth second half so we should have an improving profit performance 
first half, second half from the core business. We also said that should we settle any emissions type opportunity, we were going to keep the, the cash that that generated as a reduction in the, in the net debt number. Clearly, there's not going to be one of those in second half. So where we're looking at the minute is as cash collections continue to improve, we're going to invest in, in the new case portfolio, whether it be emissions or housing or, or credit hire in, in that order, really. So I would suspect that net debt will be similar to where we are now at year end. And should Mercedes settle 2024, then we'll have another marked reduction in, in net debt during 2024. But yeah, it will be um, those key, I suppose, um, significant cash generators that we're going to use to reduce net debt over the coming period. And as Alan described, not only we, uh, you know, got 12,000 cases now against Mercedes, our case against um, BMW is commenced and that marketing campaign is ongoing. Okay. Um, just uh, a, a question on trade receivables. Gross trade receivables are down, which is good. Due to the way that settlement adjustments and impairments are calculated, the net receivables are up. Can you comment on this since it has an effect on NAV? Sorry, Nick, just run that by me again. Um, gross trade receivables are down, which is good. Due to the way yep. that settlement adjustments and impairments are calculated, the net receivables are up, which affects the NAV. Any comment? I think we've just become better at settling our particular cases. So there will be it, there will be a mix change in it depends whether they're talking trade receivables or, or the total um, figure on balance sheet for receivables, because that includes work in progress, which won't have any provision against it. So the gap between gross and net is really only against the higher ledger. So as work in progress and um, other receivables like payments to garages for recovery and storage and repair become bigger, then there's a slight mix change, I suspect, between the between the period. But we are clearly settling more cases. Um, settlement rates are improving. So that would reduce that kind of drop off between gross to net. OK. Um, and two questions on the same issue. Um, would management, given the share price where it is at the moment, would management consider scrapping the dividend and using cash for a uh, an equity buyback? That's um, certainly something, Nick that we've discussed in the past and we'll continue to discuss and make the appropriate decision at the right time. Fair enough. Um, we are coming to the end of time, I think. Um, question, how, how are higher interest rates impacting Inexo's borrowing costs? Uh, unfortunately, same as everybody. Much of our um, facilities are um, Sonia or whatever the appropriate term these days is, plus a, a set margin. So, yeah, we've seen and, and you'll see through, coming through the P&L statement um, an increase in, in interest charges, even though borrowings are down. Um, and that's just a function of where we are. OK, and just one question about um, we turn away, you know, 50 percent of the of the credit hire opportunities we get offered. Um, does this have any negative consequences going forward? I mean, um, does the word get around or do, do people, uh, does it put people off? I mean, at the moment, we have quite good cross-selling in terms of credit hire to housing, disrepair and so on. Sure. Um, how satisfied are our customers? Um, I believe very, Nick, um, you know, by, by the number of repeat business that we get from customers. But obviously, it's disappointing for people where we can't take the cases on. But equally, there are the smaller players in the market that can take the case on and assist the client. Fair enough. Um, OK, I think we're, 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 we've pretty much run out of time on this. Um, there may be another couple of questions. If anybody would like to pursue those further, then do do contact me and I'll put them to the management in due course. Um, Paul, I might hand you back uh, just to sort of wind things up. Fantastic. Um, that's wonderful. Thank you indeed for Nick for running through those and thanks for the team for your responses. And of course, as Nick said, all questions submitted today, the team will have the ability to review those and where appropriate to do so, we'll publish the answers and responses on the Investor Meet Company platform. Alan, perhaps before just redirecting investors to provide you with their, their feedback, which I know is particularly important to you, could I just ask you just for a few closing comments? Yeah, sure. Thanks for that. I'm very excited over the next six, 18 months 
particularly with the increase in cash receivables, the cash generation, and in particular, the reduction in net debt. We're also seeing, as we've said throughout the presentation, growth in HDR with the benefits that go with that and emissions. And there are still many, many opportunities for credit hire. So it's all hugely positive. And I'm very proud of what the team have achieved, particularly at Bond Turner. That's fantastic. Look, thank you all for updating investors today. Can I please ask investors not to close the session? It should be automatically redirected to provide your feedback in order the team can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete and that is greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of Anexo Group PLC, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation and good morning to you all.